one of the amazing stories that you tell in the book is kind of, you know, you you ran your first ultra in 1993. And that was probably when everyone thought you were nuts for running even a marathon distance. You know, back then ultras were so incredibly niche. And I'd love to hear you speak a little bit about the changes in the ultra running scene because, you know, you, you were just such an early adopter and the sport has exploded in popularity, but also just in the performances in the last, say, five to 10 years. So what, what really has changed? Yeah, I think that in 1993, when I ran my first ultra marathon, there was something like 3,500 finishers of an ultra marathon in North America. And last year, there was something like 135,000 finishers. So the sport has, you know, it's blossomed, it's exploded, if you will. The growth has been phenomenal, but it's still, you know, when you think about it, it's a very small base of people. It's 135,000 finishers in North America, where, you know, just in the U.S. alone, there's about 600,000 finishers of the marathon. And then if you look at like a, a 10K, there was, you know, close to uh, 7 million finishers. So it's still a very niche sport, but it has grown up in a lot of ways. Um, one way you mentioned is the competitiveness. And, you know, when I started doing it, um, you know, I, I, was, I was a surfer that was drawn to adventure. You know, I used to love surf safaris and I kind of saw ultra marathoning as another sort of safari. And I didn't have any formal training. I mean, I ran competitively in high school when I was a freshman, and that was it. But now, as, as you've seen and you've mentioned, there are you know world-class collegiate runners. There are Olympic qualifying marathoners that are getting into ultra running, and they're just crushing it. I mean, it's, it's almost every ultra has a new course record set, you know, it, it, almost without exception. And that's because the depth of talent now is, is phenomenal. And it's, it's more competitive than ever. But that said, I still think that most people do an ultra marathon for the experience, not to win it. I still think it's, it's a very small percentage of the ultra marathoners that are, you know, at the front of the pack and are competitive. Most people are in it to, you know, to either achieve their, their personal best or just to take on some new challenge. And I think that's the beauty of the sport. I think that, um, you know, if you go to like the Boston Marathon, you know, when you see someone, the, the first thing they ask you, what, what's your goal? You know, they, it's all about time where, you know, if you talk to someone who ran the, like the hard rock marathon, I mean, the, the hard rock ultra, you, you know, the question is, did you finish, <laughs> you know, did you make it? And that's, a, you know, and, and you look at a race like um, the Barkley marathon where, you know, very few people ever make it. Yeah. The, the Barclays marathons is, is just, I'd love to do an entire podcast just on that insane event because, you know, it's held every year and most years they don't even have any finishers, never mind, you know, a a few podium finishers. And so that, that is just a fascinating thing. And yeah, I think there's an interesting dynamic with ultra marathons and, you know, they're almost so difficult, especially if you get into a mountainous ultra, one that has high altitude or an extreme environment with a lot of heat or, you know, down at the South pole, it's almost a binary issue. Can you finish it or will you not finish it? And just finishing is an incredible accomplishment because of all of those obstacles that are in the way. Where do you see the sport in 10 years? Is it going to continue becoming more and more popular and more and more competitive over time? What kind of, you know, I just talked to, uh, someone who, who thinks, you know, the 200 mile distance is now becoming the new 100 mile distance. So where are we going to be a decade from now? Yeah, I think there'll be continual permutations on, on the difficulty and distance of races. I mean, we've already seen it starting to emerge with, with longer races. I'm, you know, the hundred milers now the new marathon where the, like you said, the, the 200 milers now the new hundred miler. Um, I think we'll see these kind of niche events continuing to grow. I think um, we'll see a lot more adventure, you know, type events. Like um, I mentioned the Atacama Desert Crossing, which is part of the the Four Desert Series. They put on these races in these, you know, like the Gobi Desert, the Sahara, um, you know, Antarctica. I think more people will be drawn to these um, kind of uh, experiential events where they're multi-day and really um, exotic locations. Uh, I think that mainstream uh, ultramarathoning, you know, the The records will continue to fall at, you know, races like the JFK and Comrades. Uh, And I think that 
the sport hopefully will not grow up too much. I mean, we saw a lot of consolidation in marathoning. Marathoning used to be kind of a mom and pop sport because the races were all independent. And then, you know, big organizations like Rock and Roll came in and they kind of consolidated everything. If you look at ultra marathoning, there's there's few, um, you know, coordinated series. Most races, again, are just, you know, someone saying, hey, I want to do a race here and, you know, opening up entry and getting like 40 or 50 runners. And that's kind of magical. I hope that never goes away. 